Thank you for being my friend. Yeah. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Oh, uh, and if you threw a party, uh, invited everyone you knew, uh, you would see the biggest gift would be for me. And the card attached would say, Thank you for being a friend. Do, 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 do. Yo, what's going on, YouTube family? Apparently, as you can kind of tell from my singing, my voice is not at 100% right now. I've been, I've been a little hoarse. It's not COVID, it's something I thought it might've been laryngitis or something, I just, anyways, get your hopes up. This is for all the pessimists out there, the so-called realists. I have been you, where it seems like the wiser thing, it seems like the more level-headed, logical thing, right? Is to always expect the worst, to kind of have your hopes in a very subdued state. That's been me. I, I really, really have always been against getting your hopes up. Because when you get your hopes up, man, the higher they are, the longer the fall. When things don't go your way, when you get disappointed, when things don't turn out the way that you hope them to be, it sucks. It freaking sucks. Chaos and disappointment is not the exception. It's the norm. For things to go bad in life is not a glitch in the simulation. It's how the simulation tends to go. When you hear people wanting to be positive, to be optimistic, to have their hopes up, um, to expect the best, when people speak like that, oftentimes it sounds like naivete. It sounds foolish. It sounds like you're being gullible. And the last thing I want to be is gullible man and talk about manifesting and putting stuff into the universe you just got to speak it and it's going to happen. i'm like man if you own that cool but the pessimist in me is like man that stuff don't work <laughs> that stuff don't work man you know because the pessimist says one of the greatest sources of disappointment in life is hope and if you don't hope for anything then you can't be disappointed when things go bad you're not really caught off guard because you always figured them to go bad in the first place when it comes to relationships when it comes to career, when it comes to inequality and injustice in the world, we've conditioned ourselves to believe that like, yo, if I just keep my hopes low as possible, like it's kind of like when you walk, I don't know if some of y'all, I don't know if you like walk across a bridge or something or something where you like, it's like a knee jerk reaction to me when I'm walking up something high and I feel like something is swaying. I tend to like crouch a little bit, like I, that's gonna help. Like if this thing falls, at least I'll already be a little closer to the ground so it doesn't hurt as much, right? I, it's bad thinking, but you know, that's like a visual for it. So we tend to keep our hopes low. So that way, if things don't go, the way they're supposed to go, we're good. But I suggest what I've been learning in my life is to hope the best, not to be some kind of like unrealistic optimist, to be some gullible fool who doesn't see the reality of the world and how bad things really can go on a personal and global and social level. The reality is our hope informs our very practical decisions. What we hope for informs what we do on a regular daily basis, on an hourly basis, how we plan our days, how hard we work towards something. Example, if I wanna be, someone wants to be an NBA player, you know, they're 15 years old, I wanna to go to the NBA, then they've gotta have their hopes up high. And surely there's a lot of people who have their hopes up high, and there's a lot of people who are not gonna get into the NBA. But guess what? I guarantee you people who don't have hopes of getting the NBA are likely not going to get in the NBA. Like you don't stumble into something that exclusive. You don't stumble into something that successful. Some people have success handed to them, but for the majority of us, success is not something that is stumbled into. Joy and happiness and contentment is not something that people stumble into. Accomplishment, organization, sustainable love in our life, these are things that are not stumbled into. They are hoped into, they are worked into. And so if I hope the best, then with that expectation, I make moves on a regular basis. So if I'm trying to go to the NBA again, using that example, then like, okay, I've gotta, I gotta figure out what, how did people who made it to the NBA, how did they work at 15? How did they work at 16, 17, 18? What were they doing? It almost becomes this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. Don't hear me saying I'm guaranteeing success for anybody just because you hope it. Just because you hope it doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but I can guarantee you if you don't hope it, it ain't gonna happen because you're 
your practical decisions of everyday life are not gonna be informed by that hope. If you don't think things are gonna go well, then you're gonna make decisions on a regular basis that don't work towards that goal. So therefore, yeah, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in the negative. Like, oh, well, of course you didn't make it that way because you never thought that it was really, you didn't truly believe that it was possible in the first place. I've gotten to the space now, I'm, I'm tired of self-sabotaging by always expecting things to go wrong, always expecting mediocrity versus like, ah, oh, like, I really think things can go really, really well. And if that's the case, then I've got to start making moves that work that way. So it's not me saying the hope in and of itself is the thing that makes it happen. It's the thing that informs you that makes it happen. Hope takes a great amount of imagination. Imagination is what sets us apart from the rest of the animal kingdom, right? Like birds have been building nests the same way forever. Like there's not like a bird version of Tim Cook who comes out and does like an Apple event and explains like what the new nest is gonna look like in 2022. It's a nest. We're gonna use the same straws and debris that we've been using for the past, I don't know how many years. There's no imagination beyond that. But for humans, for us, we can imagine something different. And therefore we can hope something different. You know, for creatives, oftentimes we think that, you know, the creative geniuses that we see in the world that have that are living now and those that have come before us, we think that it's somehow like these creative ideas are just dropped into them because they're just a creative genius and, they, and that is exclusive to them. But the more and more I hang around some really, really dope creatives, uh, the more I see that there's a thin line between creative genius and then just stubbornness. What I mean by that is, yes, there is something innate about a creative. There's some people who are just like, man, you're gifted. You see the world in a different way. And yet, they all go through these ruts where things, they, they create really poor art. And yet, they know that they can create good art, and so they sit with it longer. They've got their hopes up to create something really, really dope. And so it's like, well, if it's not coming now, it will come. I just need to sit around for it. I need to work at it. I need to work my pen. I need to work my brush. I need to work whatever it is. I'm gonna sit with this thing until something dope comes up. I'm gonna write every day, I'm gonna paint every day, I'm gonna take pictures every day. And then the people that you see that are so amazing, there is a genius quality to them, but there's also an aspect of they've just put in a ton of hours, a ton of hours of getting better. And a lot of those hours are a bunch of like terrible art, just really not good stuff or just very average. And they just stuck with it. I'm currently going through the autobiography of Asada Shakur. I believe everyone should read that. And in the foreword, which is written by Angela Davis, Angela Davis quotes a guy named Walter Benjamin. And he says that it is for the sake of those without hope that hope is given to us. So hope is not just for yourself. It's also that there are people in the world who are hopeless, who cannot imagine a better life for themselves. And it is those with hope who are able to have their practical decisions informed by that imagination of a better life and work to that end. A pessimist has nothing to offer to those who have no hope. It is those who have the wild imagination. They are the people who are very realistic about what they see around them currently and yet are fighting to a better end. So it goes beyond just yourself. It goes, it goes into the realm of, of helping others. And that's where I'm at in my life right now, y'all, just in my personal sense and the way I see the world that like, I've realized I've sabotaged myself in many ways before just trying to keep my hopes low so that I can you know be realistic but I think there's joy in just hoping there's a there's an excitement in just the joy of hoping that something will go well in the in the anticipation and can it be disappointing when stuff doesn't go your way sure but it's only devastating when you attribute that disappointment to your dignity to your self-worth to your value that when things don't go your way, you automatically assign it to something being wrong with you. Man, once you begin to be okay with yourself and love yourself and see yourself as valuable and with dignity and worth, aside from all the things that you may accomplish or the things that you may receive, whether it be love, money, accol accolades, accomplishments, whatever, if you just say, my existence itself is, is valuable, then I can have all the hope in the world. And disappointment won't be devastating. And that frees you up to get your hopes up, man. Get your hopes up.